So this is a quick overview of the enclosure itself then and how I've constructed it. Now because I've uh, flipped the shells around I've got this nice flat surface inside the enclosure now that I can just stick the uh, tiles directly to. Because I've done that I've now got a lip on the uh, other side of the shelves and I've connected them all together with nuts and bolts. Also using the uh, angle iron here that uh, comes with the shelves for the uh, legs on the shelves and it's come together really well it's extremely strong so uh, what i'll do i'll turn it over and i'll show you how i've uh, connected it all up so the shelves have gone together really really well i've joined them together using nuts and bolts and using this angle iron here to uh, join each section together and that makes it really really strong and uh, because i've used the length of the shelf here for most of the enclosure I didn't have to uh, modify and cut a great deal of this because um, I don't really have any tools for metalworking or anything like that. It makes it very easy for me to uh, construct this enclosure. Now the only thing I've really had to cut and modify are the two end sections of the enclosure and these two end sections are cut out of one long shelf unit. Now because it's uh, you know the shelf unit is uh, a four shelf unit it has taken two actual shelf units to make this because I needed the extra one for the ends but uh, at £10 each for the uh, shelves it hasn't cost a great deal of money at all in fact I priced it up originally to buy this kind of sheet metal it was going to cost me uh, three times more to buy the sheet metal than it did to buy the uh, shelving units from Ikea so the next stage for this enclosure then is to permanently fix these end pieces to the enclosure at the moment they're just held on with some masking tape here and uh, I'm going to start to think about uh, putting a hinge mechanism on the front here with uh, one of the other uh, shelves for the uh, door itself and I've got these hinges just from the uh, local hardware store so I'm hoping that's going to work out and I can have a hinge door that lifts up here on the front. So I'm sticking the cones onto the tiles now, just using a traditional uh, two-part epoxy. Just mixing enough up to do one row and then mix some more up and do the second row. A little bit time consuming but it's not too bad. Uh, they're doing a good job of uh, sticking those in place there. And I'm leaving a 40mm margin around all the tiles just so when you get the opposite tile in here like this one these uh, cones here are not going to make contact with these cones so it leaves a nice space in between there and to fit these tiles into the uh, enclosure itself because I've used the uh, panels on the enclosure as a mould to make these I'm going to have to get the jigsaw and uh, saw off 10 millimeters all the way around these tiles just so they can sit uh, next to each other and fit into the enclosure and uh, it's quite easy to uh, saw this with a jigsaw it's uh, you know it's just like uh, MDF or something like that so it's not too bad so this is the final tile that I'm now working on this is going to be the base of the uh, chamber itself so before I uh, stick down these cones I want to decide where I'm going to put my connections in here so I can connect a uh, antenna under test so what I want to do is have three connection ports so one at this end and one at the far end and that will enable me to do hopefully is do some uh, gain measurements between a uh, reference antenna and the antenna under test and for more general uh, VSWR measurements I'm going to have connection in the middle here to do that so I'm now thinking before I put the cones on where I'm going to drill the hole so I can lay down the uh, coax now I've already decided that I'm going to use semi-rigid coax so I'm going to have uh, a connection here at this end like I said one in the middle and one at the other end so I'm starting to make progress now on uh, working out how I'm going to fit everything together but uh, what I've done I've cut down the uh, bottom tile first and uh, got that in place and I've just used a marker to mark off where I need to drill the three holes for the three SMA connectors through the enclosure itself now when it comes to attaching these what I've decided to do is use epoxy and also cut them 
uh, so that they all interconnect with each other so I'm going to cut this side tile down a little bit and the one on the opposite side as well so that will help support the top tile on the uh, ceiling of the enclosure and same as uh, with the back as well the back I'm going to cut in such a way that it's uh, held in place with the sides the bottom and the top and that way uh, you've got the strength of uh, each tile holding each other up and also the epoxy as well because the epoxy although it sets really strong doesn't really uh, stick well on a smooth surface like this metal so interconnecting them like that will also add a little bit of strength as well but now I'm cutting these down to size as well I really wish that I'd have done that uh, prior to sticking the cones on because the dust does get everywhere and it's messed them up a little bit so uh, you know if I make another larger one in the future I'll definitely cut the tiles down to size first and then stick the cones on so I've drilled the holes in the enclosure for the uh, semi-rigid coax to uh, come up through the uh, bottom of the enclosure and the tile there and I'm now getting ready to start positioning the tiles into the enclosure I'm not going to fit them in permanently yet but uh, I've also gone along the seams here with this copper tape just so we've got a good seal so I've been busy cutting the tiles to the size that I need them to be and what I've come up with then is that uh, each one of these tiles will support itself on top of each other and uh, you can see here I've now got a gap all the way around the top there so uh, the top one here will hopefully just slide in there like a drawer and what I can do is run some epoxy just down the edges of these tiles and not bother epoxying them to the uh, chamber itself and hopefully uh, supporting each other in that way and a little bit of epoxy um, it'll do a nice job of holding that in place and it has produced quite a bit of dust but at least the uh, majority of the dust is magnetic so it's quite easy to clean up so I've made quite a bit of progress on the enclosure then I've now got all the tiles fitted in here and they uh, each support each other and lock each other in place and I've also used a little bit of epoxy uh, glue in between to uh, kind of cement them in place as well but uh, the majority of the weight is uh, held in place by each other so it's a little bit like a jigsaw and they just lock themselves into position there but uh, what I'm working on now is because I've got these hinges here and here just normal uh, wood hinges that I picked up from the uh, DIY shop I'm now looking at uh, the gasket that goes all the way around here uh, that secures itself to get a nice uh, RF seal there a watertight RF seal if you like when the uh, actual uh, lid comes down and closes so I'm making this uh, copper gasket myself it's going to go all around the front of the enclosure and also on this side as well of the lid I'm going to uh, attach some here and to make that I'm using this uh, double-sided sticky phone that I picked up from the hardware store it's uh, normally used for a uh, draft excluder but it's uh, quite thin but it's spongy foam and then I'm uh, covering it all in this uh, copper tape so I'm making a kind of a sandwich putting a layer of the copper tape on there and then a layer of the uh, foam tape here so that goes over the top there and then pull it over and sandwich it up so we've got this nice uh, connection here which is quite spongy and then when I've got it on the uh, lid as well it'll come down sandwich in between and hopefully we've got a nice seal there and we won't have any leakage of RF so I've got the top one on so I'm just working my way around here now putting the gasket seal on so I thought I'd quickly show you the process of uh, putting a gasket on one of these sides now if you look at a more professional anechoic chamber they have uh, copper fingers the small fingers and the interlocked with each other to form a uh, gasket so this is the uh, best option that I can come up with anyway and it's also the cheapest option and uh, what I'm going to do is stick one layer of copper tape on here and then put the uh, foam over the top of that so this copper tape is really easy to use and because it's got a sticky back finish to it you don't have to use any kind of glue to hold it in place and this is the uh, foam tape that I've got it's uh, double sided sticky sticky on this side and uh, pull this uh, covering off here and it's sticky on the opposite side as well so I'm laying the foam tape down in the middle of the uh, copper leaving uh, equal margins at either side just doing that by eye and then I can just trim this off at the bottom 
and then finally over the top of that I'm going to put another piece of the uh, copper tape to seal the uh, foam in between to make a kind of a sandwich but uh, I'll just remove this protective cover on this side so we've got the two sticky sides of the foam and the copper tape there so it should be nice and strong so it's just a matter of taking your time and getting it as straight as possible And once you've got it positioned in place there if you just get some uh, kitchen towel something soft and then just gently stick the sides down and the kitchen towel as well also uh, flattens out a lot of the uh, kinks and wrinkles that you get in there so that's the gasket in place and when we've put the gasket on the uh, opposite side of the lid as well when it comes to close down on top we've got this sponge and we should get a nice gasket seal there so now we want to put all the plumbing in the uh, anechoic chamber so we can uh, have an antenna inside there and uh, bring it out with the coax so we can hook it up to the test equipment so I've drilled these three holes here and what I'm going to do is use some semi-rigid coax to come up through these holes with a uh, bulkhead SMA connector on there so we can attach the antenna under test to and I've also made these uh, little feet as well out of some plastic PVC tubing just to uh, make it a little bit more stable and uh, it's not dragging along on these uh, metal surfaces here and digging into my bench and basically all they are is some uh, short lengths of PVC tubing and I've just put a cut down one of the sides and they just fit over the top of this lip quite nicely so I've modified some crimp on SMA bulkhead connectors here so I can solder it onto the uh, semi-rigid coax because I don't have uh, any semi-rigid uh, bulkhead connectors but um, I just trimmed off the neck with the Dremel tool, ground it down, pre it with some solder and uh, then flooded the rest of it with some solder around there and it's holding it on nice and tight. Now to make it a little bit easier to uh, connect the antenna inside the anechoic chamber I'm going to have uh, this raised up a little bit just beyond the cones of the uh, absorber here so I've cut off some heat shrink tubing uh, three pieces all the same size and I'm going to use that as my guide coming up through the hole so it'll be protruding up like that above the uh, cones themselves just so I can get in and tighten on the uh, antenna up that I'm going to test a lot easier than having it down inside the cones and then fiddling around inside there I don't think uh, this amount of the uh, semi-rigid coax poking up is going to make a great deal of difference to any uh, test results that we get at the end so I've got the plumbing in place, I'm just holding it in with uh, duct tape at the moment because one thing I'm uh, a little bit uncertain of is uh, the outside of the uh, case of the anechoic chamber, the metal case, that does need to be grounded but at the moment it's uh, grounded to the coax because this is semi-rigid coax I'm getting a direct ground to the uh, ground on the coax now I'm not sure whether having it like that is going to play a uh, major role in the outcome of uh, the antenna that I'm testing inside here so I guess the only way to really know is to try it so I've got it like this temporary down with some duct tape when I've got it all together I'll uh, give it a test and then what I can do is uh, isolate the uh, coax by using some more heat shrink tubing I can just remove this and then feed it back through again apply some heat shrink tubing to isolate it from the metal case and also isolate the outside of the coax here to the metal case and then uh, try a second test just to see what kind of outcome we get with that at the moment I'm thinking that it really should be isolated from the outside of the metal case but um, only really testing will tell us whether that uh, needs to be the case or not so as you can see it's just uh, temporarily held here with some duct tape I've got it coming out on this side so this is where I'm going to be connecting it to the uh, spectrum analyzer or the network analyzer on this side because I'll have it on the, this bench here and I've got my test equipment off to the side here on the left so what I'm going to do now is put some more uh, uh, SMA connectors on here, some bulkhead SMA connectors, make a little uh, temporary panel um, and then uh, have them on the side here so we can connect directly to them. 
So this is how I've uh, attached the inputs then for the coaxial cable so we can get some data out of this anechoic chamber. I just used a uh, plastic project box here and uh, I've epoxied it to the side wall of the anechoic chamber. Now I do know from experience that uh, you know sticking something like this onto uh, a flat metal surface using epoxy doesn't tend to last a uh, whole long time so what I'll probably do if I decide whether it's uh, okay like this to keep the coaxial cables uh, grounded to the outside of the anechoic chamber then I'll probably swap this out for a uh, uh, metal die cast uh, project box instead and uh, fix it more firmly to the outside wall something else I've had to do as well which I should have thought about from the beginning is uh, because I'm a content producer I really want some kind of lights inside here so I've put a strip of LEDs on the inside and uh, this is what this uh, wire is here to connect up to the power supply to turn the LEDs off now if you want to make one of these yourself then that's probably not something uh, you'll have to do but because I'm going to be taking video shots and everything I really needed some lighting inside the anechoic chamber itself now uh, it's virtually finished and I'm ready for a test but what I'm doing now is just going around the outside in the seams I've already uh, put some of this copper tape on the uh, inside of course but now I'm just going around the outside and just uh, applying copper tape to the outside seams as well to finish it off. So here's the finished anechoic chamber then and I haven't tested this yet so I'm going to test it now on uh, camera. So I thought we'll start off with something simple. I've got a uh, small dipole antenna in there that I already know how uh, tuned this is to 2.4 gigahertz. I've been working on this dipole for uh, quite a number of months to perfect this. So let's see what kind of results we get with this now that it's in the uh, anechoic chamber. Because remember the, the reason I wanted to develop this was was because I was getting a lot of reflections in the lab when I set it up a uh, test with the spectrum analyzer on uh, something like this I had to keep really really still not move around otherwise uh, it would jump around on the spectrum analyzer so I couldn't adjust the spectrum analyzer uh, without refreshing it again to get rid of any reflections. so hopefully this is going to work out a lot better and it has taken uh, quite a long time to complete this project, a lot longer than I thought it would. Uh, I knew that, uh, you know, making the uh, cones and everything else uh, take, uh, quite, took quite a lot of time uh, because I was limited to the moulds that I had. But uh, I've just been so busy with uh, work related things and also videos and the blog that uh, it's taken a lot longer to complete than I thought it would. But uh, at least I've completed it now. So basically the setup is the same as I've shown you before. I'm going to be using the sweep signal generator, feeding in a signal from 1 to uh, 3 gigahertz, going into the directional coupler here and then uh, feeding into the spectrum analyzer here. Now something else that I've since thought about now that I've got it built that uh, maybe I could have done is uh, I've also mentioned the lights but possibly put a small camera in there because all you're going to be seeing uh, when the uh, lid is closed is a metal box. So you're just going to see the output on the spectrum analyzer. So I think in future if I make a slightly bigger one which I probably will be doing I've got uh, some other methods to uh, build that uh, that I want to try out is uh, to install insert a camera in there as well just uh, because I'm a content producer it'll just make the video uh, you know a lot more exciting than just watching the spectrum analyzer so that's you know I think this uh, anechoic chamber is probably a little bit too small to be putting a camera inside there I'd re need a small camera with quite a wide angle lens but definitely for the future for a bigger anechoic chamber I will definitely be including a camera so here's the image on the spectrum analyzer then and the first thing that I notice is how clean this uh, waveform is. I don't think I've ever seen it as clean as that before. It's uh, you know more pronounced. You can definitely see the uh, peaks there of that uh, wave. And this is our frequency response here. I've got it set down at uh, 2.4 gigahertz here. This is uh, 2.5 gigahertz where we've got them uh, peaks there from what I don't know yet it's something I'm still looking into but uh, it just wants to this antenna just wants trimming down a little bit just to move it over this way just as very very small amount and I probably uh, you know wouldn't even do that with uh, a pair of side cutters I'd do that with a fine file 
I'm only talking about a very very small amount but even so I'm pleased with this uh, little dipole antenna and how uh, this uh, you know I've developed this from a previous video where I explained with the dipole development kit and uh, you can see there how low it goes down there so it's got a really good VSWR but uh, the thing is now I can move about and I'm not interfering with the uh, signal output on here at all I'm not having to keep refreshing the uh, screen there to get rid of any anomalies that I create by moving around so uh, it does seem like uh, you know it's working fine whether it's as precise as uh, you know something that costs thousands and thousands of pounds I don't know but all I can say is that it's working out quite well here in my lab and I'm really pleased with the output here on the spectrum analyzer really nice and clean so next then I'm going to uh, test out this little Yagi that uh, is another antenna I've uh, been working on recently but I just wanted to quickly show you the uh, uh, mounting that I've come up with here for this so I've used one of the original uh, test tiles that I did when coming up with the uh, design uh, and materials for the anechoic chamber and uh, that slots into the cones on the uh, base of the uh, chamber quite nicely and I've just mounted epoxied the top of one of those uh, cheap uh, tripod mounts that uh, I give away with the uh, Biquad Yagis and what's nice about these is they are uh, virtually all plastic inside so I've super glued the uh, plastic ball joint there onto the uh, plastic top mount here got rid of the uh, metal screw so it doesn't uh, bend now it's just held there in place but now I can just mount uh, you know different types of uh, larger antennas onto this and just sit it in the anechoic chamber just using uh, you know interlocking of the cones here connect it up and give it a test so let me uh, set it up in the chamber itself so you can see it more clearly so here's the uh, little Yagi uh, ready to test in the anechoic chamber then so it also gives you an idea of uh, the kind of size of antennas that I can use um, in uh, this small anechoic chamber it's not very big but uh, you know it's uh, my first time building one so hopefully the next one I can build a little bit bigger but uh, I've had to use an extension cable to uh, connect it up there to the uh, output but the test setup is uh, exactly the same as it was for the little dipole antenna so this is the little Yagi antenna then and again a very nice clean waveform I can uh, move around I'm not getting any reflections there whatsoever uh, you can see the uh, frequency response there it's quite wider than the little dipole antenna so it spans quite a uh, large range there so that's what uh, you know uh, is characteristic of a uh, Yagi antenna it can be used over a uh, greater frequency span uh, this little Yagi antenna is something that I'm currently working on to uh, bring the VSWR down a little bit so I want to see this V a lot sharper going down lower um, at the moment um, the VSWR is a little bit high but again it's probably comparable to what you would uh, buy retail um, you know if I found a uh, Yagi antenna at retail that uh, performed like this you know you can be quite pleased with that but I just know that I can bring that VSWR down a little bit but um, again a really nice clean waveform and I can move around I can uh, alter the uh, spectrum analyzer and it doesn't interfere with the signal at all so uh, I think this is a uh, success I'm quite happy how the anechoic chamber has turned out so the anechoic chamber then seems to be a uh, success I mean I've set out to do uh, what I originally set out to do was to cut down on reflections when testing antennas here in the lab and it's definitely done that I'm getting uh, more accurate uh, results and uh, I also want to use this for some gain measurements in the future so it'll be interesting to see what happens when I start uh, pumping some RF on the inside of this to see if uh, you know we get any uh, results from that whether it's a, a detriment or you know it uh, performs just as well as it has done here just testing the frequency response of a couple of antennas I uh, also as I said when I was building this wasn't sure whether grounding the semi uh, rigid coax to the outside of the chamber was a good idea or not and uh, it doesn't seem to have made any difference I did intend to uh, separately ground the anechoic chamber 
uh, but uh, because the uh, coax is making contact now it's actually getting grounded through the uh, ground on the test equipment so I haven't had to put a separate ground in there um, if I get some time I may hook up some uh, uh, cables and uh, bypass the semi-rigid cables just to see if I get any kind of uh, different results but um, I'm pretty pleased with the results I'm getting at the moment so i hope you enjoyed this video it's been a long time in the making uh, you know from when i first thought of this and i started filming in the summer it's uh, taken a lot lot longer than uh, i thought it would have done but uh, that's because i've had other things going on in the background but uh, i'm pretty pleased with this and i hope you enjoyed it and you've learned something from this i'm uh, definitely uh, going to take some of the methods that i've used uh, learning to build this uh, to build a uh, slightly bigger one also uh, I think I'm going to go down the road next time of uh, using some foam and uh, mixing up some graphite and carbon uh, into a paste using uh, a clear acrylic varnish and try and impregnate the foam with that to try and uh, create the uh, the tiles and the cones etc just like they do in a uh, normal traditional anechoic chamber like this they use impregnated foam rather than the uh, solid epoxy that i've used here so it might be a little bit more easier to build using that method and a lot less time consuming but uh, i'll be giving that a try sometime in the future so if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up and uh, any questions or comments please drop them uh, below and i'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one